I got a real treat for you today. You're a great wizard, Harry. Very almost. Ten years and eight feature films. The most successful film series of all time. Now your chance is coming. Welcome to Hogwarts. For the first time ever, to go behind the scenes at the studio where it all began. It's home to us. We were there for ten years, and it was lovely seeing those amazing sets every day. Wow! To step into the actual sets. It's tiny little details that you probably don't notice when you watch the film, but when you actually walk down it, you can see the work that's gone into it, and it's it's, it's amazing. See the real costumes. Marvel at the groundbreaking special effects. As we reveal how the magic was created. This is incredible. This has been a long time coming, and I'm very excited. Get ready to visit the UK's newest attraction, Warner Brothers Studio Tour London. The making of Harry Potter. Secrets will be revealed. Don't ask any more questions. That's top secret. Opening spring 2012. The countdown has begun. Expecto Patrona. Wicked. Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to Geek Fest Rants. My name is Carlos Perón, and joining me once again, I have James here. Say hi, James. Hello, everybody. Today we are continuing on a show we started a few weeks ago, having to do with a certain trip that James took to England. Now, last time around, we focused on Doctor Who, the trip that he took to the sound stages and the museum and all that stuff having to do with Doctor Who, but... I don't know if any of you caught this on the last episode we talked about this, but there was a second part to this where he actually went on a tour of the, I guess it's called the Harry Potter experience or the Harry Potter sets or the <laughs> Harry Potter something. A little different than the Doctor Who, but also in a way full, chock full of props and sets and material from the actual movies. Now, I remember seeing something similar to this. A couple of years ago, they came to Times Square in New York and they had the Harry Potter exhibit, which was a small collection, if you will, of a lot of the movie-related props and sets. Obviously, this is the traveling exhibit that would go from city to that city. That was the truck version of the Doctor Who tour from the 80s. Right. Well, yeah, but, this, <laughs> but don't get me wrong. But I heard good things about that one. I never I loved saw it, it but was I heard great. good things. I took my daughter and she's a huge Harry Potter fan. She loved it. But you did get the feeling that it is a traveling exhibit. It's not a full-blown museum type of exhibit, so they didn't have the space, you know, to really go too crazy on it. But they had, you know, several floors worth of, uh, of stuff to show you. This is a different thing altogether that James went to see, and especially since this is something in England. Now, let's also keep in mind that there is such a thing now as the universal Harry Potter, whatever you want to call it. Which is also supposed to be great. Right. Which I've never heard a bad thing about again, it. Again, so you have all these different things going on. So, James, tell us about how is this different, or how, what's the hook on this particular thing, and how did you you know, get into this one? How old is your daughter? I'm going to say 12. Perfect. <laughs> Well, I'm like a 12-year-old girl when it comes to <laughs> when, when it comes to Harry Potter. I don't know what it is about Harry Potter. Hold on, I'm, I just found the next end tag for the next show. <laughs> I don't know what it is about Harry Potter. I didn't watch the movies to begin with. I didn't get into it. I didn't read the books. But you after, tripped and fell on them? After What's the happened? first four movies came out, my friend had the DVDs and he said, "Hey, they're pretty good. You should give them a try." So he lent me the first four movies. And I watched them Back to back to back, obviously. And they blew my mind. I couldn't believe how great it was. I'm a guy I like science fiction and James Bond and Indiana Jones. To me, Harry Potter was this kid's stuff. And they were little kids when they started, technically. I think they were like 11 or 12 or something. Your daughter's age, probably, which is perfect for her. Well, once I saw these movies, it, like I said, it just blew my mind. I loved it. I couldn't stop talking about it to people. You've got to watch Harry Potter. I'm like, I'm this grown man. Tell, you got to watch Harry Potter. People are like, well, yeah, they're good, but would you just, you just read them? Did you just find out about them? And I'm like, yeah, really, I did. I knew they existed. But for various reasons, I just didn't get into it. Well, now I was totally into it. I went and started buying the Legos, obviously. I went and got all the books. Video well, games. It turned out. Right as I watched those first four, a couple months later, 
the fifth movie was going to come out. So, okay, I watched that one. There was going to be a video game, a Lego video game. It's just something I just can't stop talking about now. I think I've put it into its proper place, so I'm not quite like the 12-year-old girl, but I really did love these movies. And it turned out, before the seventh movie came out, I read from Memorial Day to, I guess the seventh book came out about the end of July of that year, and I just gobbled them, just one book after the other, and I was ready to go once the seventh one came out. And so... I was as much into Harry Potter, I guess, as I was into Star Wars and things like that at that point in my life. Well, Universal had the park, the Harry Potter, whatever. Land. The uh, thing you went to see, which I do work in New York and I didn't get the opportunity, but I know you went to it and a couple of my friends also went who are mm -hmm. big fans and loved it. Well, when I found out that they were going to take the sets after the last movie and not destroy them and turn them into something, I said, this is something I've got to see. But when am I going to get to England? And I remember you were emailing me photos from, I guess, online stories yeah. based on that you were showing me all this great stuff. As excited as I was and knowing your family likes it and stuff, it's you like, want well, to at least how, keep up with it. Yeah, Plus, it's when the hell is stuff. any of us going to go when to am I going to get to? I, I'm like, well, whenever I go to London, I'm going to give it a shot. <laughs> because it's doing. actually in Leavesden, which is slightly outside of London. It's about 45-minute ride. So it's not quite there, but it's a big studio. A lot of movies, the Batman franchise was filmed there. Mm -hmm. Some Star Wars Episode One and some pickups for some other movies. And, you know, it has a big history. Well, I tell you about the Doctor Who tour I'm going on, which is kind of crazy just in itself. And you're like, well, why don't you go to the Harry Potter thing? I didn't remember this thing existed. After sending all your clippings and looking <laughs> online and reading about... This was about, your idea to begin well, with. Well, thank God for you to tell me that because... <laughs> I dove into it now, and I, I said, that's it. I was going to London basically for four days, two days of travel, two days of intense movie, right, TV Who. stuff, and so I had to fill it up with quality stuff so I didn't waste my time, and that was my second day. Doctor Who in Cardiff was the first day, and this Harry Potter was the perfect thing to do. It was just it, everything fell into place, except I hesitated on buying my tickets I looked online. I found out the tickets were reasonable. They were approximately 60-something dollars, you know, for the whole world of Harry Potter at Warner Brothers Studio in Leavesden. Well, I went back about two days later. Tickets sold out. I go, oh, my God, I don't know what to do. I got to go to this now. <laughs> well, it turned out I found, like, a second-party seller, and they were also involving a bus tour in their oh. special Harry Potter magical coach, uh -oh. which was basically a double-decker style bus. So you thought you were going to get rolled in this. <laughs> I didn't know what was going to happen. It was $90. So basically it cost me $15 each way for the bus in addition to the ticket, which I knew it, they were sold out from Warner Brothers. So. Oh, so the bus was to get you there. That was a whole separate – it happened to be a bus oh, company. Oh, good. Well – I buy the ticket. It, it turns out I went back in after the tour and I complimented the ladies who run the company that it was the best thing that I could have done because I thought I was going to take a cab or the subway or the tube, whatever. It would have been chaos. It would have cost me way more money if I even got there on time because it's not in London. So it's like a tour company. It's London, but it's Leavesden. It's outside. It's, it's, yeah, it's a tour company that takes this. This was the perfect thing. Everything just started falling into place. So I had to take this. First thing in the morning, 7 o'clock in the morning, get on the bus. They take you to the studio. They have the ticket provided for you that you've paid for. It was wonderful. Now, little did, like I said, did I know what was going to happen because I bought the ticket online with my credit card. So I knew if, if I got screwed, I'd at least get my money back. But I would have the disappointment of not having this if this were some well, kind the of... the trip is what was important. If this were some kind of scam. Well, it turned out... Because, because I was trying to read feedback on this company. They're like, oh, it's hard to find the place, you know, blah, blah, blah. It worked out. You just didn't know. It was perfect. I get on this magical Harry Potter bus. It's, you know, decorated on the outside. You're like, well, what more do you want? It's like, that's the thing. You're going to see Harry Potter in Harry Potter bus. They take you to the uh, studio, which, like I said, it's in Leavesden. What they did was the films were shot there and various other places, but on all their sound stages. Well, it turned out they saved the sets. They built two special replica sound stages I'll call them but they're more user friendly for tours and they have you know proper facilities uh -huh. and snacks and shops and everything so it's not like the actual sound stages they're still shooting movies there they shot the batman movies there up until recently so this is a real working facility and they arranged in a really nice tour and, it, and again little film and interactivity the harry potter 
world. Hogwarts, uh, the various dorms, the various uh, locations and classrooms. Now, are we talking costumes. recreations here or, or authentic? These are the real deal. These are authentic. These are legitimate costumes. The cast has been there. J.K. Rowling has been there and sanctioned it. And everybody's real excited about it because how many times have you said, boy, I wish they did this with Star Wars. Even how we've talked about on some shows with Disney. Don't get me started. And, and you know they're, <laughs> they're talking about doing walkthroughs and things like that. But could you imagine if Lucas or 20th Century Fox, whoever had the most smarts at the time, which I'm really surprised Lucas didn't because he's pretty forward thinking when it comes to this kind of stuff. But I remember seeing pictures of the Falcon being tossed in the back and various sets being It's probably being because up. 20th Century Fox owned it. <laughs> And they just did, they needed studio space. And they're like, we got to get rid of it. Sometimes they reuse some of that wood or sometimes they just had to get it out of there because, you know, it was scrap. It was in the way because another production was coming (laughs) in behind it. Well, these people, since they shot it over a 10-year period and they had saved all the main sets. Well, because they they needed it. They realized at the end, we've got a gold mine here. Let's see if we can't do something about it. And this was a lot of fun. They take you on a bit of a film. The introduction is a film. They talk to you about now, it. Now, these the, are bigger groups the pre- than the previous tour you took? Uh, this had maybe 40 to 50 people in my particular group. At some point, you all spread out. You're on your own. But in this beginning part, you sit down, and there's a little film. It's really nice. The producers, the screenwriters, the actors all talk about what it meant to them to be part of this over 10 years and how they all... You know, they'd celebrate each other's birthdays. Now, they'd was cel- this shot specifically for the store, or these are like DVD extras? No, these are, um, these are fresh, because I've watched a lot of the DVD special edition extras, which got me into wanting to see how they did it, because I saw, you know, the green screen of this, and the, the train of that, and everything like mm-hmm. that. Well, this was fresh stuff of them talking about it for this particular event. And the movie ends, the screen rises, And you're looking at the door into the great hall of Hogwarts. So they call us all down. Everybody kind of gets around this. They're all, everybody's now like, you're tingling. Taking pictures like crazy. Yeah, you're tingling about to go into Hogwarts. And they, three, two, one, and they open the doors. And this was a special time because this was Christmas. And the day before, they had just turned this into a Christmas look. Kind of like how Disney and some of the other theme parks oh, do. Okay. Around a certain time of year, they'll have the Christmas party. They and do the, a little extra the, decorating. All the trees around the uh, at Christmassy and you know the hot chocolate and mm-hmm. cocoa and this whatever. It's all the same. Well, they had just done that for this event. So there's a Christmas tree, and in the movies they did that. There were some Christmas. The movies took place during the holidays. Yes. Yes. So it all made perfect sense. It was just so unbelievable when you're in the Great Hall. It's the actual set where the classes all got together and where the Dumbledore spoke to everybody and the magical candles are above you. Now, that stuff is all a fact, but the rest of it is real. They had the various types of foods lined up on the tables. They had various costumes for the uh, students and for the teachers and bad guys, good guys. And once you leave the Great Hall... Now you're on a walking tour, basically. Now, are you in there at your own speed, or yes. certain things are being said? You know, is there any music or, or voiceovers or anything? Once you leave the Great Hall, you're uh-huh. basically on your own recognizance. Okay. You can go as fast or slow, but there's a lot to see. So they say it's about a three hour tour. If you watch Gilligan's Island, you'll know how that lasted. It had so much stuff, and it's so interactive, and it's so. Is it broken down into uh, pre production, production, costumes? You know, how does it. Yes, but in various areas they have, and I'll I'll try to explain it the best I can. There are sets that are decorated with props. The set looks like it did in the movie. And then they'll have costumes with, you know, like a mannequin wearing the costume of Harry or Hagrid or Dumbledore Mm -hmm. or something. What they look like in that particular scene most of the time. Then there's little interactive stuff of how they did something. Well, the candles, they actually tried to do practicals, but it wound up burning the cables. So they showed the actual ones hanging with the cables, but it turned out they just did them CGI as the movies went on, and and CGI got better. This movie started around the late 90s, came out in 2001. Uh, By 2005, CGI was fantastic, so they could do a lot more things. So you see all that. You see props. You see maquettes which are kind of like these things they used they're almost like animatronics they would have air things in it so movement so buckbeak looks like he's moving and he's turning around as if he's really real but it's basically just air and you know a mechanism inside some of the uh various props 
big props, like the moving stairs. They actually used some of them while the students were on them. Most of it was, you know, an effect. And you just wander around, and there's some people, there's some little stations, and the various snow. So some of the episodes, some of the movies they did that had snow. Well, there's woman, no, and, and I was the first group, so nobody was around me. Yeah. And she said, this snow was used, so when you're walking on it, you hear it sounds like crunching snow. And then this particular snow was with somebody threw a snowball, and she let me touch it. And it was actually cold. It's this concoction, these, like whatever they're made out of. Oh, yeah. Then there's one that they can sprinkle around. It's almost like paper that they can easily vacuum it up. And then there's a fourth one that's actually kind of a combination of salt, but it's very corrosive of stuff, so they can only use it in certain effects because it looked the most real. It was the most dangerous for the sets and mechanics and things, Mm -hmm. but it looked the most real. So that little stuff, being part of that and seeing all that blew my mind. And it's just so beautiful. These sets, there's so much detail because... If you're in Hogwarts, there's all kinds of history of Hogwarts that you kind of see on the screen. These kids of Hogwarts have been there for maybe thousands of years. But you don't the, the, on the movie, they don't let you spend that much time exactly. figuring now it with out. Blu-ray it's Blu-ray all... and some of the extras that they've given you, they'll give you some frames, they'll give you some things to see. But when you're watching the movie, they're showing it lovingly, but it's not a photo tour. You know what I mean? It's a movie, so you kind of have to see. Oh my God, look at that! You know, I can't. Did you see that? And that's what I got to see now in depth. The door for the Chamber of Secrets with the snakes, the, the actual doors there. The clock pendulum. Dumbledore's office. What about the alley with all the shops? How is that staged? Well, the tour had these little sections, I guess, to keep you moving at a certain pace and things. So, like I said, we went to those sets. Then you go to this little outside area. Well, because, again, it's Christmassy. They made it snow outside. It's, again, I keep bringing it back to Disney, but Disney has a Christmas yeah, party yeah. that makes it seem like it's snowing. I think Disney uses bubbles. Foam or bubbles Bubble, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it might be, be like soapy kind of foam that's not dangerous. This was a very similar kind of thing. I don't know what it was made out of. It might have been like just condensed water that they made it seem flaky because it didn't pile up or anything like that. But you're walking and you feel like, and it was a chilly day. It was a chilly time. It was very cold and... And they kept saying, oh, we hear it might even snow. You know, Well, I was looking forward to that because I like that kind of make-believe stuff. Well, out in the back lot. That, we'll, we'll call if you them. lean over, you might see a shark. <laughs> ah, no, that's another tour. <laughs> the outside back lot area had Privet Drive, which was where Harry's uncle lived and where Harry grew up you know, under the stairwell. You actually got to see the inside prop of the stairwell. The night bus, which is that triple-decker purple bus, is out okay. there. The bridge that they cross over, the one that they could actually use on the set. There were some various vehicles. and. But now these outdoor houses from the film, are they functional or they're just facades? I went up to them. I think there was stuff inside because you could see in, but... It's kind of like any movie set. It's just enough that if the camera would see If the door see opens, it. you see something, but yeah, it's not a fully... I, didn't, I wasn't allowed to open doors. You were allowed to go right up to it and stand there and knock on the door and touch it, but you weren't going inside, not on this part of the tour. Maybe if you were a VIP or a special type of situation. The funniest thing is I always wanted to try butter beer, and that's a drink that they drink on the show, and it's a combination of like a butterscotch and root beer or something. Well, I'm like, what is that going to taste like? I want it... And they have it in Florida, but I hadn't been to Florida. Okay. Well, I was. They were selling a. Li- there was a little snack shop where you could buy a little mug, which is just like the little a replica of the little huh. mugs that they drink that they used on the show, and you could drink butter beer, and it's exactly that. It's kind of like butterscotch root beer, or you know, a carbonated butterscotch. Scotch and butter. <laughs> <laughs> no scotch. Wow. <laughs> well, after you're on this outside area and you get to see all that, the snow, and get that vibe, and and of course, as you're walking through it, there's music, and like I said, the various stations of the real people who are talking, and some of the actors are giving you introductions. But are some of these people in character? Uh, No. For instance, when you go to the Monsters and Creatures, (laughs) Warwick Davis is like the tour guide of this part. And he's playing Warwick, and they're doing funny stuff, and they're kind of making fun of him, and he's making fun of some stuff. And you know, he's like the straight man for the jokes. Okay, this isn't like the Renaissance Fair. (laughs) No, but they talk about... You know, Warwick is talking about all the creatures and stuff. And then in another section, it might be actually uh, Daniel uh, Radcliffe talking about, this is when we did these things, like when we talk about the brooms. Okay. So I go to this one section once we go inside, and you can fly on the brooms. Well, I always wanted to do that. And I know it's fake. <laughs> I know they filmed the original movie outside of Cambridge. I know they did it on green screen technology. It looks like, Some of it didn't even look that great in the original movies, if you look at it. But in general, you believe it. I said, I'm going to give this a try. As goofy as it is, well, they fit you with a robe, 
You get on a... Pra- Where are the pictures of this? You get on a practical broomstick, and then it's a green screen all around you. It's like a three-sided green screen. And then they're telling you, okay, lean to the left. Now, this was my big acting debut because I was so into this, and I didn't care because nobody was around who were, was going to see me. Oh. And the only one who would see it is me if I bought the little stick drive at the end or the DVD. <laughs> so they're like, lean to the left. Lean forward. Look surprised. Look back at it. Put your hand down. You're touching the water. You know, <laughs> you're flying over something and act like almost crashed into it. Oh no! And it goes on for you know maybe five minutes, and it was just so cool. And I saw it afterwards, and it was actually believable. And I I really felt good about it. So that you didn't was a, buy it. I did. You did. <laughs> Why haven't I seen this because yet? Because I couldn't get it to run on my computers. I'm oh. going to give it to you. I, well, I have to get my hands on this. I want to see this thing. <laughs> so after all that, and I'm, I'm actually I'm actually proud of myself to have flown on the broom. <laughs> the next big thing that I know I'm looking for, and kind of like the Doctor Who thing that I had looked online and I saw some stuff. If you go to Google Street View, yeah, and you type in Diagon Alley, you can actually take a interactive 3D tour of Diagon Alley. That's the thing you had originally sent me. Exactly. And I said, I've got to see this. That's the kind of things I like about movies, these quirky sets and stuff that you can actually be part of. And it has the cobblestoned street, and it has the build, the quirky buildings and the facades and the weird interactivity of magic and the stuff. The wand shop, which is and, my daughter's favorite thing in the world. And I, they, they were actually they – were, it's almost like – they were teasing me. They're like, "Oh, you can't go in there because we were the first group, and we were." I was, I was so excited. I must have gone too fast. <laughs> sir, so, please, so sir, like, oh, sir, sir. If you just backtrack a little bit, we have a little time. It'll take because they didn't want us just running through and going right there. They want to keep the pace. Well, it was it was killing me that I, I was like, "What am I going to do now?" <laughs> so finally, they let us in that area, and again, they do such a good job. There's music that you know pure stereo, high def music, whatever, that makes you feel like you're part of this again, world. This isn't exactly where they shot it, no. but it's because the sets are so huge and there's so many of them and they're built, you're basically surrounded by the real authentic You're stuff. in two specially built sound stages, but these things are positioned in those sound stages as they would as they be were in the film. if they were filmed. You know, obviously they have to have exits for fire and emergency and you know, handrails on some things right. for people who are, have disabilities. But in general, you're on Diagon Alley. And when I got on it, the lighting effects that they do in this are so great. And I know something about theatrical lighting and stuff about television and mov- movies. They really go the extra effort. They made this Diagon Alley look like what it would look like at night. What it would look like in bright daylight and everything's happy, you know, a more mysterious purpley kind of look. And I did a 360 shot of it and I got a little bit of everything. It's just so neat to be a part of it because you really do feel you're there. And again, the crowds weren't ridiculous. I think I went, being okay. on the first tour helped a lot. If you go, you know, by the 11 o'clock tour on a Saturday morning or a Sunday morning or a holiday, there's probably double the amount of people lingering. How long was the entire tour that you took, like time-wise? I probably was about two and a half hours, but they say the average is three hours, hours, and they probably do that so people pace themselves, and there's not people lingering there from nine in the morning till five at night, and there's not people running through it like I almost did. (laughs) So after the Diagon Alley, you go into this other area where there's more uh, props, and then these paper models of what they were going to build. And how they were going to, so the director could, and we would actually show camera where they could put camera platforms. Like maquettes or, and stuff like that. Yeah, and it was, it was so, so detailed. And I took so many pictures of them and Dumbledore office and there's the actual, the Diagon Alley, the little model, paper model of it. And I could see what it turned out to be based on what I had just been on. Well, nothing could have prepared me for what I saw next. There were these little paper models of Hogwarts and how they, you know, the, the, the castle looked in relationship to each other. And, you know, you watch the movies at first, you're like, there are just spires and walks and bridges and, right. you know, towers. But there's a, real, there's a real pattern. And the funny thing is, at some point by the end of the series, you kind of know in real, where these are in relation to each other because the various things that have happened and, you know, where the owlery is and where the clock is and where Dumbledore's office is and the various classrooms in relation to the whole castle. Well, I made this turn 
And I had known that there was going to be a model. I read online, you know, what part of the tour is, a model of Hogwarts. Well, I'm thinking some kind of model that's maybe the size of a countertop or a tabletop under glass. Because at Disney, they've done models of what they were going to do, Epcot, and models of the Magic Kingdom castle and various things. And there are these things that are about the size, maybe like a picnic table size. Yeah, not bigger than a car. And they said, oh, well, it's for the holidays because it's the Christmas look. It's going to make it snow at Hogwarts. Okay, so I figure maybe it's a under glass. They have these blowers that make it look like it's. I I don't know why I thought this. There was nobody had ever said that's like that or not like that. It's just that was my vibe. Well, after the whole Diagon Alley and the paper models and things like that, I make this turn. I hear the music is a little louder and it's a little darker, and I'm on this platform. It is Hogwarts in all its splendor, every detail, plenty of snow. It's the size of some people's house. It's probably bigger than most people's houses, most average people's houses. And you're looking down on it now, and the lights are this beautiful effect, and it looks very blue and nighttime and glowing. The snow was all white, so everything has got this blue effect. And the music is playing, and you're walking, and then they, you have all this, uh, the light starts to change, and it gets a little orangey like sunrise, and then it's bright, and it's day. And it's like you get all these different effects. It makes you want to cry. If you're a fan of Harry Potter, you are seeing Hogwarts. Imagine if you had a model train, like we do Legos. But or now, how Sundas. was this? This was used as a miniature set. Well, what they did was then they brought cameras around it. Now I know, for instance, in the third movie, Curran, who is the director of the third movie, made a lot of weird angles and movement and stuff. And a lot of the directors after that, I don't know whether his influence or if it was just a coincidence. There were a lot of like movement around yeah. it and beautiful shots, not just... But not CGI. You talk about... This was the real stuff. You can go down, yeah. and the way cameras are, if they have steady cams or crane cams and stuff like that, I don't know where this was. It was it was obviously on some soundstage where they could get cameras and lighting and stuff like we saw for this effect. Yeah. It's just so unbelievable, and 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 like you have you have shots where you zoom down and you want, to, and I'm sure they mix it with actual special effect shots of the people walking over these bridges, so it could look like I can imagine all this. I'm seeing all the different locations, the little boathouse where Hagrid brings the students in in the second movie, and the backyard area kind of where these they are go practical down to his, effects. They're to actual, his hut. they're actual three dimensional uh, models For built this model instead of full blown CGI. They built the building. entire Hogwarts castle. And I guess they used it for various shots. Well, if, you, if it's that big, then you might as well use it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's... I, I haven't read the the whole history of it and where or why they went that way instead of a... I'm, and I'm sure they did a lot of CGI stuff as well. But something about this is just... And what just, do you do? You walk around it or you're in the middle of it? You start off high above it looking over it. Yeah. And then the grading goes down and you come around the back of it. And so you can see every bit of this model uh, as much from as various possible. various different levels. And you end up at the ground level looking up at it. You know, it's beautiful for pictures and things like that. And I have so many pictures and at the various different lighting effects. It just knocks your sock. I asked, I said, can I please go back up? Because I, it blew my mind when I was done. I, I, I feel like I need to see it again because I was just so clemped whatever i was just so surprised that it was so beautiful that was you know the cherry on top they probably I didn't kept that, that for last on purpose and it's funny it nowhere on any of the literature does it say the enormity of this thing really? it just says you know and the hogwarts castle model but it blew my mind wow. now something your daughter would love because she makes these beautiful harry potter wands it's like the inside of the wand shop. They put names of the actual crew and writers and set people and you know, art department people on the boxes for this. Now, we would never see that. Well, they got to put something. <laughs> but when you go to Ollivander's and he's got all these stacks of wands, there they are. The real names. Now, you can't really pull them out or anything like that. It's kind of like a wall of wand boxes. It's like but, fake books. Yeah. It was just so cool to see because I had always wanted a wand and now I have one, <laughs> thankfully. But it was just so cool to see that. And and like they're like, oh, there's a J.K. Rowling one. See if you can find it. And it's usually at like eye level for children so they can go and look. I don't think I ever actually saw it. I kind of know where it was. But I did see John Williams, the composer of the original score. Well, then finally, once you leave that area... Of course, there's a little shop at the end, but this is a humongous shop. (laughs) And just about anything Harry Potter, you could get there. Expensive stuff, cheap stuff. Well, like I asked you on the other show, really rare, unusual stuff, or most of it you can find on your own? There was more rare stuff than I saw at the Doctor Who place, but I think because I don't know as much of the Harry Potter merchandising, that's why it seemed rare to me. But you could get everything from replicas of the Triwizard Cup, robes, costume replicas expensive and then of course like 
hats and, and scarves from the, the different houses, the various, some toys, the Legos. There was some area with Legos and the Lego games, the books, most of you know that kind of stuff. What I wanted, I purchased already. Uh, so I really didn't purchase anything. There was one area I was going to buy. There are these little things that are like Legos, but they're called Kubricks, and they had some special ones there. Mm-hmm. And I was going to buy one for myself, but it was kind of like the Lego minifigs. You kind of buy a box and you hope you get the one you want. Yep, random package. There was yeah. one particular one I would have liked to have as part of, you know, if I was going to spend, I think it was like 12 bucks or something like that. Wow. So I held off. Maybe it's maybe I should have just bought it and said, screw it, I'll take a chance and you know I'll get this chumpy, chumpy character instead of the one I wanted. <laughs> but I couldn't guarantee it, so I passed on it. But I'll probably, if I wanted it, I could find it online. And then after the shop, there's little coffees, there's Starbucks. It's a beautiful Christmas tree. It, it was just such a nice place, a nice experience. And then you get back on the bus and they take you back to London. And it wound up being a really great bus trip. Like I said earlier, I, when the bus trip ended, I went in and complimented. You know, everybody always tells you how when they have a sucky time, but nobody ever goes in and says when it was a great time. And I wanted to let them know everything was just really nice and simple. They had the ticket ready, the bus ride, they parked right in front. And so it, it made it a nice experience getting and going back from it as well as being there. And that was the basically, I only had two days, two full days. It was a lot, it was a whirlwind trip to do all that. And other than that, I just wandered around London for a few hours and went to some of their new landmarks and, you know, had some lunch and had coffee, you know, and used the Starbucks Wi-Fi. Let me tell you, if you're a world traveler, everybody might hate Starbucks because they're expensive or maybe they don't like their coffee, but Starbucks is the traveler's best friend because they have free Wi-Fi. <laughs> and if you're traveling and you don't have a data plan or you don't want to take a chance and you know you burn through your minutes or, or you don't have the SIM cards and things like that, shut everything off on your phone and you can go and sit in a Starbucks and just use their Wi-Fi and send texts to your friends and emails. And, and uh, if you're into Skype, I guess you could probably use Skype over the Wi-Fi yeah. or FaceTime or something. Wow. So it wound up, that helped me a lot in Wales and in London. And the whole trip, like I said, it was so jam-packed but it was so much fun. Well, it sounds like uh, very unusual to get lucky enough to get two big trips like that and come off really happy with both of them. You know, sometimes you go on these trips and, you know, you'll have a bad experience in one thing and it'll ruin the entire trip, but it sounds like the, you know, the actual events that you went to delivered exactly what you wanted them and more. For the, the flight, the hotel, the locations, the TARDIS and Cardiff and all that, and Leavesden and those people and how nice they were, um... It just was, it was overall a great experience. And if you can only do part of it on one, of the, if you're ever over in the UK, if you ever do one or the other, you really should try. And there's even a rumor that they're going to do, at Leavesden's going to maybe do Batman stuff in addition. Now, I don't know if that'll be a different ticket. You buy the Harry Potter world or you buy the Batman world separate, which probably is what will happen. Or you just spend the day there then. You do one in the morning, one in the afternoon. But if they did that, with the Nolan Batmans, <laughs> wow. with the loving and caring that they did with the Harry Potter, boy, they're going to have a gold mine. And I, and I think that's the wave of the future. We touched on it very slightly, like Lucas should have done this back then if they did a cantina setup or a Death Star setup or the Millennium Falcon walkthrough or the hangar bays or Cloud City or any of those dopey things. It would have still, to this day, been drawing people. <laughs> but I hear they're doing it with the Hobbit world in New Zealand. There's like a walkthrough of the Shire Jeez. and things of that nature. And with Harry Potter and possibly Batman... And I guess they could do other, you know, big, maybe maybe Avatar could probably... Uh, well, there's more Star Wars films coming. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a possibility. And that might be... And now seeing that, that might be when we get our Star if, Wars walkthrough. if Disney's the owner, Disney already knows where to I put don't them. know what exists of the original Star Wars sets. And the, most of the prequels were fake. So... I bet you they can do nice recreations. Yeah. You're going to feel like you're walking on the Tanta 4 or... Yeah whatever and you know well if they ever do these things we'll do a show hopefully if one of us <laughs> either one of us or somebody we know can get their butt to these different countries and and actually witness these things and see those we'll definitely report on them so i like to thank james first of all for joining us today and give us all this information thank you james thank you and we will see you guys soon on the next geek fest rants bye bye everybody Thing ever. Just
the only way to describe it, really. You're walking around and you can't believe you're really there because it's actually where they filmed Harry Potter. You're inside the real Hogwarts. Stood where the original actors stood. I took loads of pictures to show with my friends. You can drink Barca beer. <laughs> I even got to ride a broomstick. Just like Harry. The people there are amazing. They even show you how to cast spells. I saw Dumbledore's office. And the Great Hall. And Diagon Alley. Go behind the scenes of the most successful film series of all time. It's absolutely brilliant. Book online to discover your inner child. I'm actually proud of myself to have flown on the broom. Well, I'm like a 12-year-old girl when it comes to <laughs> when, when it comes to Harry Potter.